GameSpot's initial Battlefield 2042 review in progress relied on time we spent with the game during a publisher review event ahead of its release. Since then, we've tested the game both during its week-long early access period and after its full release for a final review. In the days after its launch, Battlefield 2042 has been pretty buggy. Things have improved since the review event and the early access period, thanks to a day one patch, but problems persist. Players have documented a whole host of issues from weapons and characters not loading, to enemy players freezing instead of falling down when they die. Sometimes scopes just don't magnify, or you can't revive a teammate because the prompt never appears on screen. And sometimes, bullets just don't seem to work against some players. My experience with Battlefield 2042 on PC has been buggy but playable and none of my issues have been game-breaking. Servers have felt pretty stable, and glitches were mostly just momentary annoyances. But your mileage may absolutely vary when it comes to these problems, especially given the other, much more troublesome issues players have documented online. It seems like the experience might be worse on console than on PC, but at least for the time being and before more patches are released, you're going to see some bugs. The rest of our impressions of Battlefield 2042 remain the same, and our original review follows. Sometimes, everything in Battlefield 2042 just clicks. You and your squad, each playing different specialists, work together as a team and use your special abilities to clear a building and capture an objective. One drops a sentry turret, another heals teammates, a third scans for hostiles, and the last grapples up to a perfect position for an ambush. Moments like this, where the franchise's underlying gameplay combined perfectly with new ideas, were my favorites in playing Battlefield 2042 during Electronic Arts' pre-release review event. The game is at its most fun when it brings new ideas together with the franchise's traditional feel. Playing the right character with the right gun on the right map at the right time elevates the underlying competitive first-person shooter framework that defines Battlefield. The sector is now under our control. A lot of times, Battlefield 2042's elements work well together, but not always. Battlefield 2042 steps out of the shadow of past games in the franchise by offering you the opportunity to play specific specialists, each with their own special abilities and gadgets, rather than choosing from broader, more generic character classes of past games. In our time with Battlefield 2042, there were a lot of moments where having the right specialist for the job felt great, and a few where some characters felt like the wrong choice for the map. They got to my cover! It illustrates how the game can sometimes struggle as developer DICE expands it away from its underlying formula. Some specialists, like the wall hack enabled Pike, are useful on any map, as long as you can get close to enemies. Others, such as the resource dropping Angel, often are a lot less exciting or impactful. Still, while some ideas and characters don't necessarily feel like they jive with everything Battlefield 2042 has to offer, the game takes steps forward that expand on what already works about the franchise by pushing you to play in different ways. Specialists are the big new addition to Battlefield 2042, representing an adjustment in the choices you make about how you'll face off against other players. Where Battlefield previously had squads composed of players taking on different roles like Medic, Assault, Engineer, or Re Recon, the specific specialists you can choose from fill those roles in 2042. So while multiple characters might be considered support or assault class specialists, each is distinct from the others. It gives Battlefield 2042 a more hero shooter feel, taking pages from games such as Overwatch or Rainbow Six Siege. Veteran Battlefield players might chafe at the idea of hero shooter sensibilities intruding on their military sim FPS, but the addition of specialists in Battlefield 2042 is often one of its highlights. Especially when working closely with your squad, having a variety of specialists and knowing how to use them well creates a lot of situations where you can help each other out. Battlefield is generally an FPS best enjoyed with friends, utilizing communication and teamwork. And the ways that different specialists can synergize and support the group brings out the team play experience in a lot of new ways. What's more, Playing with different characters gives you vastly different gameplay experiences. Flying around the battlefield with a wingsuit as Sundance, or zipping up to high ground as McKay, 
is pretty far removed from pushing toward an objective with a riot shield as Dozer, sprinting through fire to save a hurt squaddy as Falk, or setting up an ambush with a sentry turret as Boris. Because of their different abilities and uses, each specialist brings their own specific feel to Battlefield 2042, offering you a lot of different kinds of fun even in a single match. As mentioned, the addition of specialists isn't always perfect. A few feel out of place or even kind of useless on certain maps. There's also the constant shooter problem where exciting characters that earn high kill counts, like Paik with her ability to see through walls for short periods, will undoubtedly draw more use than support leaning or more stationary characters like Falk, Angel, and Boris. But DICE promises to add more specialists in the future, and there's enough diversity of gameplay experience in the cast already that seeing additions and recombinations and how they work together is an exciting prospect. While different approaches to gameplay mostly come from your choice of specialist, they're supported through Battlefield 2042's highly customizable gear loadouts. Your kit comes with a primary gun and a secondary sidearm, as usual, although now you're able to use any gun with any character. There are generic loadouts for each class, which give you items like a deployable med pack if you choose the medic kit, or a vehicle repair tool if you choose the engineer kit, but you can also adjust these anytime. That means that just because your specialist is designated as recon or support doesn't mean you have to play them that way, allowing you to mix and match aspects of different classes with specialists to create a playstyle all your own. Having a broad opportunity to adjust what gear you're carrying, even within a match, is a big plus in the quality of life column for Battlefield 2042. In addition to loadout customization, there's also the new plus menu system, which allows you to set several attachments for your guns in the loadout screen and then change them on the fly as you play. If you're headed into some tight hallways, you can quickly swap your assault rifle's long-range scope for iron sights and toss on a suppressor to cover the sounds of your shots. If you're facing a vehicle, you can trade out your anti-infantry rounds for armor-piercing bullets. The ability to use any weapon at almost any time, combined with more customization for the situation you're up against, makes you feel like both an important part of a team with a specific job and a versatile fighter ready for a variety of situations. Speaking of quality of life changes, there's nothing quite as nice as the new call-in tablet that lets you summon a vehicle from just about anywhere. Battlefield is known for its huge maps that take a lot of time to cross, and calling in a jeep or a tank almost whenever you want is excellent. Battlefield 2042 includes three different types of competitive modes at launch, each offering surprisingly different experiences, although there's no single-player campaign this time around. The more traditional are the all-out warfare modes, Breakthrough, and Conquest. Both are about huge armies of as many as 128 players attempting to capture control points in various sectors as they fight for victory. Conquest remains as fans remember it from past games, with the goal being to exhaust the enemy's respawn tickets by killing opponents and capturing control points. The more points you capture, the more the opposing team bleeds tickets. Conquest, like in past Battlefield games, can feel chaotic and haphazard, with players streaming in from all directions at all times, and plenty of opportunities to get picked off by somebody you didn't see. That can be increased by Battlefield 2042 feeding in occupying forces, AI-controlled soldiers who fill out a match's player roster if there are gaps. The AI bots are not especially smart, but they do help make matches feel like enormous battles with a huge number of combatants. Breakthrough, on the other hand, is a more streamlined, tuned version of the experience. One team attacks while the other defends, but only one sector is active on a map at a time. The attacking team has to capture all the control points in a sector in order to advance to the next, but they have limited respawns with which to do so, while the defending team has infinite respawns. Breakthrough is a bit like Rush in Battlefield Bad Company 2, and feels like a more action-heavy, straightforward game type compared to Conquest, where you always know roughly where the enemy will come from and where the action will be, making huge maps feel less daunting. Where Conquest is a huge and free, if confusing, experience, Breakthrough is a smaller, tighter, and more predictable one. In both all-out warfare modes, though, it often felt like battles came down to which team was smarter and better 
at using vehicles. There are a couple of specialists specifically equipped to deal with vehicles, but for the most part, tanks and wildcats still tend to roll over players, sometimes literally, who don't have many good options to deal with them. Hopefully, as players get more used to the options in their loadouts and the plus system, the balance between specialists and vehicles will even off a bit more. Battlefield 2042's other modes, Hazard Zone and Portal, take a very different tack from the more traditional Battlefield modes. Hazard Zone is a squad-based free-for-all mode that borrows from Battle Royale, but with a more objective-oriented flavor. Your squad of four heads onto a map with the goal of seeking out and pilfering hard drives from crashed satellites. Capturing drives earns you special credits you can spend on your loadout between matches, as does killing opposing players and occupying forces. But to get the money from the drives, you need to reach an extraction point and board a plane. If you die in the mode, you're dead for good, unless a squad mate can survive long enough to use an uplink device found on the map to summon you back into the fight. Hazard Zone's mixture of battle royale and free-for-all ideas makes it a really standout experience, particularly when you add in the specialists. Unlike in other modes, your squad can only have one of each specialist on it during a Hazard Zone match, so working together to decide on a strategy and the abilities to fit it is important. Where the all-out warfare modes are huge and messy, Hazard Zone is a much more strategic and close-knit experience, and it works beautifully with all the different customization and specialization elements at play in the game. The drawback of Hazard Zone is that winning begets winning. The more money you earn in a match, the better your chances of being well outfitted in the next match, because you can use that money to buy tactical upgrades, like uplinks to save your squad mates or faster health regeneration for yourself. Money is also necessary to buy anything other than the base assault rifle, pistol, and grenade. If you want a sniper rifle, you need the funds to buy it, and it will only last for one match. Unlike Battle Royale games, though, the slate isn't wiped clean with every new match. You're rewarded for having done well in your last run. So the best players seem like they'll always have funds to play with so they can always run their favorite loadouts with their favorite slate of tactical upgrades, while everyone else seems like they'll be at a disadvantage. Finally, there's Portal, which fills out Battlefield 2042's multiplayer match offerings with seemingly endless variety. The mode allows players to create matches and game types of their own using a website editor and make them available to the community to play. The editor is impressively robust. Portal allows you to do easy things like change the rules of a match so that players can run faster or only use certain weapons, but there's also an in-depth logic editor that lets you create much more involved contingencies. Dice demonstrates its capabilities by creating a rocket launcher only match that required players to jump up and down in order to reload their weapons, which led to some ridiculous chaos as a pair of players would miss each other with the initial bout of explosives and descend on one another in a desperate jumping knife fight. Portal also opens up the options by allowing you to mix elements from Battlefield 1942 Bad Company 2, Battlefield 3, and Battlefield 2042 together in matches. The games have all been streamlined somewhat to feel similar to 2042, so there's parity between forcing the soldiers of World War II on one team to fight those of the near future on another. Still, the mixing of different games and their weapons, gadgets, vehicles, and classes means the community can create a whole host of different experiences. The possibilities add a ton of variety to Battlefield 2042's offerings at launch, which would otherwise feel a bit thin, with only all-out warfare and hazard zone. Perhaps the biggest draw, though, at least initially, will be the opportunity to play 128-player battles on old Battlefield game maps, with their original classes, weapons, and rules intact. We ran through a smattering of matches borrowed from the older games, and each brought a rush of nostalgia with it as we played those Battlefield classics. They notably lack some of the quality of life improvements of Battlefield 2042, and a lot of Portal's mixed up modes feel like they'll mostly be good for laughs. But like the customization options and specialists in the 2042 portion of the game, Portal offers a bunch of new ways to expand on the core Battlefield experience. 
What's really impressive in Battlefield 2042 is the variety that's on offer. It lets you play a bunch of different kinds of FPS experiences, in different game modes, in different Portal rule sets, and even in the same match as you switch between characters. Portal lets you relive the battlefields of the past, but on the 2042 side, DICE has cherry-picked from popular trends like hero shooters and battle royales. The best part is that Mostly, it has done a really effective job of curating those additions so that they bring more to what players already like about Battlefield rather than changing what already works.